Have you ever dated someone stubborn? How did that go? So, of course, dating stubborn people is very difficult. I'm going to explain to you why stubbornness happens, how it happens, and how whenever you come across a stubborn person, I recommend you walk away. You don't get involved with stubborn men, especially stubborn gay men. So what is stubbornness? Stubbornness is underdevelopment. It's an identity that has not been completed and also a rebellion that has not been completed. So imagine two planes that never landed. The plane about identity, that the process of identity development is still going on, and also the rebellion energy. The man is rebelling. He's stubborn even though he is wrong. Why? Because his rebellion is used to reinforce the development of identity. So when you are growing up, the way that identity works is that, I'm going to use a metaphor, imagine you are drilling a hole in the ground and you enter into it and you refuse to come out of it. That's the essence of how identity development works. You create a certain container for yourself, you enter into it, and then you are really stubborn about it in order to complete the development of that identity. And a lot of this is going on unconsciously. You sometimes have very little control over that process. So now that you are in that hole, in that hole in the ground, you are searching for your identity, of course, you're going to be very stubborn. And it's going to have to be your way or the highway. Because the identity is in the process of construction. And the whole purpose of discovering your identity is that once you're in your identity, you are assuming a certain persona. And sometimes to assume that persona, you have to reject everyone else and focus on yourself. So this is not just selfishness. This could be a little bit of selfishness, but mostly this is a defense mechanism to bunker down in the identity that is at that moment being tested. So obviously not every attempt to make your identity powerful is going to succeed. Some of those attempts will fail. And that's why stubbornness is this necessity for a human being to keep jumping into different holes, different identities, different personas, until you find the persona that works. So that's why this stubbornness is necessary. It's actually required. A certain stubbornness that you are not going to pay attention to anybody else. You're only going to pay attention to what's inside you. And you're going to be testing out whether it works or not. And that's why coming across human beings when they're in that state is very difficult because they're going to be very irrational, for example, with sex and with other things. And no matter what you tell them, no matter how you beg them, there's nothing that you can do. And that's why this can be painful. This can be very painful if you love someone like that. And many relationships end because of this stubbornness. So to take this further, when you are choosing to date someone, if you notice that that person is stubborn, just recognize that that person will cut you down in a heartbeat because it's their nature at that moment to not care about others, but only care about what's happening in their psychology. A lot of this is supposed to happen in your teens and your 20s. But unfortunately, because today we don't have a lot of socialization, most people extend this process into their adulthood, sometimes even for the rest of their lives. They're just stubborn. They want it their way or the highway or their right or only their way. They have difficulty reframing reality. They have difficulty moving from one perspective to another. And all of this is intentional because Otherwise, they would not be able to find their identity. So that is about stubbornness and identity. But now there's another psychological force that every man is going to have to deal with in his life, and that's his rebellion. Sometimes when I think about masculinity, it becomes super clear that masculinity is really the force of rebellion. That you can replace the word masculinity and you can just put rebellion. And then you're going to notice that, oh my gosh, now everything makes sense in my life. I am constantly rebelling. Rebellion is also a tool in the arsenal of your consciousness 
to force yourself into different areas of consciousness. That your rebellion against authority, your rebellion against other people, your rebellion against people that want to love you, all of that is actually necessary to happen. That rebellion is your search for meaning, is your search for your identity. You are pushing the envelope of your reality in irrational ways. And it's important that this is irrational, and it actually is irrational whether you like it or not. And that is how you discover who you are. You see? You discover who you are through rebellion. Not through intentional journaling. You actually discover who you are because of the journey that your rebellion sends you on in your life. Now, obviously, we want to manage this rebellion. And that's why there are personal development courses. That's why you have to discover who you are, your strengths, your weaknesses, your personality tests, and all the, the whole list of personal development exercises. Once you do that, you can just align your rebellion so that that rebellion is not self-sabotaging anymore. And especially if your identity is not developed fully, that rebellion is going to be corrupted. You are going to be rebelling against things, people, information, behaviors that you should not be rebelling against. And that rebellion ends up destroying our lives. And that's why when someone is stubborn and they are in that state of rebellion and they defend it no matter what, it's impossible not only to connect with that person, it's impossible to plan. It's impossible to be consistent with interaction with that person. So this rebellion is what creates stubbornness. So people just usually universally say, hey, you're too stubborn or you're stubborn. Why are you so stubborn? Some people say that certain cultures like the Dutch cultures, that these are people that are stubborn. Why are they stubborn? Is it possible that they're not stubborn? It's just that on a cultural level, there is lack of proper exercise of rebellion and identity on a group collective level. That's very possible. When you look at all the countries today and all the cultures, is it feasible? Is it possible that they are underdeveloping just like we are all regressing in our personal lives? It is quite plausible that the whole world is becoming more and more retarded. We're not socialized anymore. Our identities are weak and everybody is rebelling, looking for their childhood. Seriously, still trapped in the childhood and developing stubbornnesses against information, people and ideas that actually are there to help them. And that's why the amount of subjectivity in the gay world is so profoundly complicated. There is so much subjectivity, so much, everybody has their version. And the reason why they have their version is because most of us are still trapped in the identity creation and the rebellion to accelerate the identity creation. And altogether, that forces so much irrationality everywhere that it's very difficult to create coherence in that space. It's very difficult to date. It's very difficult to navigate. And that's why when you come across stubborn people, I say, unless you want a temporary thing, just walk away. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be a temporary thing because that person is too unstable. Their stubbornness creates too much irrationality that then creates even other weaknesses and insecurities. So that person is stuck in a certain space that in most cases, it's not a very productive space. A proper exercise of rebellion happens in teenage years, in our 20s. And often that rebellion actually leads to some kind of accident, some kind of event, some situation that then forces the rebellion to be contained. And that's how the man discovers his limitation. That's how he discovers the ceiling of complexity that he can handle at that time. That's how he discovers on a psychological level where he begins and where he ends existentially and psychologically. So often a man hits a wall. There's an accident. There's a sickness. There is an interruption. There is a rapture. There is a symmetry break because the rebellion has been pushed too far. And we see that with sex. The rebellion about sex and how amazing it is and how everything has to be the beginning and the end, all of it has to be with sex, that is a rebellion, of course. And if that rebellion does not land like a plane lands on the ground, then that rebellion causes compensatory forces and such a complicated life 
that if you enter into the person's life like that, nothing healthy is possible, only trauma bonding. And that's another thing about living through rebellion is that because there's such high level focus on the irrationality that has to be part of that rebellion, that often we enter into relationships that are trauma bonded. It's all trauma. It's all very strange hook, usually through sex, that gives this fantasy that this is a real relationship. But that relationship is just an extension of the rebellion, usually of sex. And you are rebelling to meet some kind of need that is important to you. So that need has to be met, but you can meet that need different way, as opposed to through that rebellion. So masculinity is a perpetual state of rebellion. This energy of movement, energy of momentum, always wanting more, always seeking something different, always being visually stimulated, always wanting to touch this, that, or the other, all these people. That is rebellion. That's who we are. And it's your job to discover how this energy of masculinity passes through your consciousness, through your sexuality, through your choices of lovers and your behaviors. You want to know when there is a bubble of consciousness squeezed out of you through a rebellion and you live in the bubble. You need to prick it. The bubble has to explode. And you need to step backwards from a rebellion into conscious life. Awareness-based state of being where you have awareness about how you have this extraordinary force inside you called rebellion and stubbornness and how that will push you over the edge a lot of times. And we want to prevent it and we want to learn how to contain it. And here's the bad news. You're going to need other people to contain yourself on an energetic level so that that rebellion can quiet down. That's why we need other people their rebellion, our rebellion, when all these rebellions mix together, there's actually peace. We need each other to be able to land our consciousness on the ground. Otherwise, we are disconnected. We are not grounded. We are constantly rebelling. And isn't that tiring? Aren't you tired? I bet you're tired. Most of you listening to this, you're probably tired of this judgment of other people constant exposure to differences and fighting over those differences and defending them. But somewhere in there, you think to yourself, is there room for love there? Is there room for friendships there? And the answer to this question is, of course, there is. There is a quiet space, even though you're rebelling. But for that quiet space to come to the surface, you need other people to join hands with them and then process this rebellion, let them absorb each other rebellions and then create that state of peace, state of grounding for each other. And then we have the space for loving relationships, for friendships, that the rebellions no longer come in to intercept and corrupt the process of connection. And where the calming down of that rebellion creates a completion of your identity. The completion of that rebellion streak. And then manifestation of the relationships that can only come into your life at a moment when you are not rebelling. So, I hope this has been helpful. This went a little deeper than I thought originally. We started with stubbornness and we ended up talking about rebellions and, and consciousness and how masculinity is all about rebellion. So I hope this helps you because there's so much about ourselves that we can learn and there's so much more freedom that's available once we accept that we do need each other for lots of psychological processes that if we don't have each other that will be extended forever. If we don't have socialization, you're going to be rebelling for the rest of your life. You're going to be living in bubbles of rebellion. Once it's sex, sometimes it's money, sometimes it's something kinky, sometimes it's something weird. And these rebellions just perpetuate the loneliness. So the love is the space in between the rebellions. And that's why we need a container that can help us 
make this happen. We need the infrastructure to make this happen. We need the pathways for how human beings, how men come together so that their rebellions do not intercept the process of a connection. And that's why we need something like the Big Gay Family Social Program, where we can preserve that space without rebellion. While in the public world, everywhere that you meet people, everyone is rebelling. They don't even know they're rebelling. And it just becomes the norm where the irrational is normalized and the rational and the relational are impossible to develop. So I hope this helps you. Thank you so much for listening. I'm looking forward to talking to you soon. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And those of you who are not subscribed, please subscribe or visit my website at paulangelo.com for a list of all the important videos and podcasts. And if you're ready for a transformation, visit us at Big Gay Family Social Program. And for that, visit the website biggayfamily.com. Okay, my friends, I'm looking forward to talking to you in the next podcast. Talk to you soon. Take care.